have you ever wondered why you are the way you are all the time? But like, why are you tall or short, have black hair or red hair, or what's up with freckles? And why do I have blue eyes when both of my parents have green? Let's find out together in this episode all about genetics. Genetics is the study of heredity, or the process by which genetic traits, those distinguishing characteristics, like my blue eyes, are passed from generation to generation. Humans have been studying and modifying genetics for thousands of years without really knowing it, selectively breeding plants and animals that showed desired traits, like fur type, size, or temperament. We just had no idea that those traits we were selecting for were determined by genes. Gregor Mendel helped us out in the 19th century, thanks to his love of pea plants. Our human body is made up of millions of cells. Each cell contains organelles that are busy doing different things to keep us healthy and alive. The nucleus is the star of the show for today. The nucleus is the organelle that contains all of the good stuff that we're focusing on, the genetic material, or genome. Here we have a cell. Inside the cell is the nucleus. Inside the nucleus are 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 in total. Each chromosome is a very long strand of DNA, like over six feet long. It's like this long, long, long. DNA structure is called a double helix, which is a fancy way of saying two strands that twist around each other like a spiral ladder. Individual sections of the DNA strand are called genes. Within those genes are chemical compounds that provide the coding for a person's inherited traits. Humans have more than 20,000 genes arranged on their chromosomes. But humans aren't the only organism with chromosomes, DNA, and genes. In fact, every living thing has DNA. The Noose River water dog salamander has the largest genome of any four-legged animal on Earth. These cuties have 38 times more DNA than you or I do. Don't get me started on salamanders. I love them. Now back to Gregor Mendel. Mendel was an Austrian monk and biologist who used the garden at his monastery to study plants, specifically pea plants. At this point, humans have been crossbreeding plants and animals for hundreds of years, like we mentioned earlier. The issue was that no one had really discovered a reliable way to get those traits they desired because they didn't really know what they were doing. So Mendel began to interbreed his pea plants with different characteristics or traits. The peas had different characteristics that he could see, which was helpful. Some plants were tall and some were short, some had wrinkled pods and some had smooth pods. Some pods were green and some were yellow. Some had white flowers and some had purple. Using a paintbrush, similar to this one, he would carefully move pollen from one plant to another, manually fertilizing them. I know it seems weird, but it's not. To learn more about plant reproduction and flowers, you can check out this video. What Mendel found was astonishing. Rather than blending, traits seemed to favor one parent over the other. So a green pea pod plant and a yellow pea pod plant didn't produce offspring with chartreuse pea pods. Chartreuse, so fancy. Instead, they produced a plant with regular green pea pods. Even more curious to Mendel, two green pea pod plants might produce a plant with yellow pea pods. These different looking plant traits seemed to pop up out of nowhere. Mendel was seeing patterns of inheritance or genetics in action, even though he didn't realize it. If you're still here liking this video, let us know and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Thanks to Mendel's extensive experiments, we now know that how an individual looks and their genetic code sometimes doesn't match up. This is the difference between genotype and phenotype. All the plants that Mendel studied showed their phenotype in the traits he recorded, 
the traits he could see. The green or yellow peas, the bumpy or smooth seed pods, the purple or white flowers. The genotype is the actual genetic makeup of an individual. The phenotype is what that individual looks like. Traits that show up more often are called dominant traits. Traits that show up less often are called recessive traits. Back in our pea pod example, when Mendel combined a purebred green pea pod plant with a purebred yellow pea pod plant and only got green pea pods, he called the green colored trait the dominant one because it was expressed in all the next generation. Then he let the new green pea pod hybrid plants self fertilize so they could only reproduce with their own genome. In this next generation, he got both yellow and green pea pods, which showed the yellow trait had been hidden or obscured by the dominant green. Mendel called this hidden trait the recessive trait. Mendel inferred that each trait depends on a pair of factors one coming from the mother and the other from the father. Now we know that these factors are called alleles. So whenever we talk about variants or versions of genes, we're really just talking about alleles. After years of carefully controlled experiments, Mendel discovered how traits were passed from one generation to the next, even without the knowledge of genes. We call Mendel's main discoveries his three Principles of inheritance. The principle of segregation states that every individual has two alleles, but only one allele is passed on to the offspring. Most of the cells in a pea plant are diploid, but the plant also makes reproductive cells known as gametes. Gametes are made from splitting normal diploid cells to separate the alleles. The reproductive cell from each parent only has one copy of each gene. That way they can each give one to the offspring. It's kind of like those best friend necklaces. I was always the bee fry. Anyways, we call these reproductive cells haploid because they have half the normal number of alleles. The principle of independent assortment states that a pair of traits segregates independently of another pair during gamete formation. I know, sounds a little confusing. Basically, this describes how every allele is split up from its partner independently of all the other alleles. So genes for one trait are not inherited together with another trait. This is because they are located on different chromosomes, which align randomly during reproduction. But again, Mendel didn't know about chromosomes like we do. So this is super impressive. This means that if your dad has brown hair and your mom has freckles, you could have both brown hair and freckles, or neither. The principle of dominance describes how genes that control the plant's phenotype work. According to the law of dominance, hybrid offspring will only inherit the dominant trait in the phenotype. Remember in the pea pod color trait, there is an allele for green and another allele for yellow. Out of these two alleles, one is dominant and the other is recessive. In this case, the allele for green pea pods is dominant and the yellow pea pod allele is recessive. Whenever the dominant allele is in the pair, it will always be shown in the phenotype, even if the recessive allele is there as well. Dominant alleles are always pushy and just kind of want all of the attention. So whenever Mendel saw a green pea pod, he knew the plant could have either two green pea pod alleles or a green and a yellow pod allele. But when he saw a yellow pea pod, he knew it had to have two yellow alleles. Remember, this is because if there had been a green allele in there, it would have just pushed the yellow allele aside and the plant would have ended up with green pea pods. On a super basic level, this is how all life works. From pea plants to our Noose River water dog salamander to the 200 ton gigantic blue whale. Thanks to Mendel's discoveries, we also know that DNA molecules are subject to change as they are copied over and over and over and over and over again. Sometimes with mistakes that can result in mutations in the genetic code. But that's for another episode. If you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Gregor Mendel. Gregor. Gregor. Gregor.
McGregor, Mendel, 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 Al, Gregor. <laughs>